Hi guys, um, today I decided I would make a video because there's been a lot of talk about a certain uh, fleece, which is Shetland fleece actually, so I thought I would make a video about it because a lot of people seem to not really too clued up on how to process it and how to get the best out of it. So I decided I would make a video explaining uh, a few quirks of Shetland because it does have its quirks. It's not necessarily the, the easiest thing to prep. It's not difficult, but it does have a few things that go with it. Uh, now, first of all, I should start by saying Shetland is a primitive breed. This meaning it's not been as selectively bred as other breeds, so like your down breeds and, and the such like that. So, it, I mean, one of its main attributes is that it used to be able to shed its fleece. Now, there are probably some uh, strains where the gene for that is still in existence, uh, but usually these days it's not as strong, strongly expressed, so the sheep won't shed their fleece as easily. Um, and generally people shear them, which actually brings me to the first uh, thing about Shetland fleece. Now, I have two Shetland fleeces at the moment uh, I'm here at uni. So this one is, this is a whole thing. This has been skirted, but it's the whole thing. So they're tiny, tiny sheep. Um, this is from Jameson and Smith up in Shetland. And I have another one, which is down by my side, which is uh, from England, but is an absolutely stunning fleece. Now, first of all, it's not, when you open the bag of Shetland, it's not overly greasy, okay? It will present itself pretty much like any other fleece will in locks. I mean, I'm going to pull a couple of locks out to show you this. So, I mean, look, here you go. Here's a few locks, and I'm just going to tease those out of the fibre mass right to the bucket. Just so, cool. so now we have a Shetland lock. Let me move that over there. Okay, Shetland lock. Okay. Now, first thing about Shetland, this will look. This looks like a normal lock, does it not? Something to do with these Shetlands is, as I said, they lose their fleece naturally, or did, and they have retained a certain character of this. In that, Shetlands have a rise, um, and a lot of people I've read have been saying, oh, "I'm getting so much waste from it. I'm getting this. I'm getting that. I'm getting nips. I'm getting gnaws when I'm carding it." That's usually because no one's explained to them that they had the rise. And what the rise is, is the a weak spot in the staple where the new fleece is starting to grow through. And there would have originally, but this is initially where the, the old fleece would have come off. You can still rue some Shetlands, so i.e. you can sort of pull the fleece off when it gets to this rise. And um, you will get the rise left on the sheep and you'll get uh, the strong, you know, the, the sound bit of the staple. Uh, as your fleece. So if I show you the rise, it just pulls off. You do have to sometimes put a bit of effort into it, but there we go. Just get to get all of it. That's the rise. That's from the butt of the staple. There is the rest of the staple. Now generally I'm the sort of person uh this is often where the most noils and nips are. I chuck that. That to me is waste. I don't really care. It just tends to go in. This is what I'll spin from. This is a shearling, I think, so of course it's got brittle tips, as they do pretty much always tend to. So they just snap off. Um, so you get the tips and the butts, really. So there, there is a more waste than if on a regular breed. Now, I would just generally, I'd probably want to flick card that a bit before I was going to spin it. And I would um, <clears throat> probably flick out the butts a bit as well. But you can see now it's far more open. There is no, There is no real... It's a bit more there. There's no real potential for well, there is potential for noiling, but it's going to car. You're probably going to get a far smoother bat with that than you would have done had you not taken that rise and those tips off. I mean, this is just a bit of unwashed, so I wouldn't spin it like that. I'd always wash it before. I mean, before you go and flick it, I would wash it. I mean, it's not going to take too much, but I have. Uh, I don't like spinning unwashed fleece. Um, that wasn't a particularly crimpy one. Now this is my current project. It's a long-standing project here. Um, this is the really good one. Look at that crimp on that. This is for a ring shawl, or it will be. So again, rise, just grab the butt, pulls straight off. There you go, about that sort of inch or so. So again, this is this is significantly more oily than the other one, um, which could be down to anything really, variety of factors. But we won't talk about that now. Um, so of course, there's the lock from that, and I'm actually that one I'm combing. So I'm washing it. I'm keeping it in lock formation 
I'm washing it bit at a time and I'm combing it on my combs. Um, Valkyrie super finds actually, because uh, I find that gets the most in the next hour. Uh, one way I have found to prepare Shetland if you want to get rid of the rise, which most night, which to be honest, nine times out of ten I think you probably would, is to wash it. Uh, but deliberately be a bit rough with it. So what you want to do is you're going to felt the butts. Felting always seems to happen at the butts in my experience. Uh, so what do I do? I felt the butts deliberately. And what happens there then? Well, the butts will stick together and form this mesh. Providing you've done it in like a mesh bag or something, the lock formation will have been maintained. Then you can just take this bit out, fleece out, let it dry, and then you've got this mesh at the back of felted butts. What did, where do we know the rises? The butts. So pretty much what you can do is I sit there with the with the, the bit of fleece on my lap and I just nip the tips off, uh, nip out the staples and where the rise is it just snaps. So then you get pretty much a sheet of this sort of like meshed, it's basically the rise, which I just chuck in the bin or you can do whatever you want with. Um, and you get these nice locks which which will make your yarn, which will make, mean you get fast smooth yarn. Um, it took me quite a long time to realise that Shetland had this and to be honest, no one really mentions it, um, but it's definitely a thing they, they all tend to have. And unless you've got a rude Shetland, they do tend to have this. Uh, well, at least all of pretty much every single UK Shetland I've ever had has had this rise. And I think it's just a genetic thing of the sheep. And I think pretty much you just have to live with it. Um, but yeah, so in terms of where I get my Shetland, I mean, <clears throat> I have Sh Jameson Smith from Shetland. I get my Shetlands from. I have this place where I get. I don't actually remember where they what they're called, but this place place where I got this ringshaw Shetland. The other place is um, Shear Sheep, as in Michael the the shearer. He has access to some really really lovely Shetlands, um, and I am I'm actually in the process of coming up one of those as well. Uh, but yeah, so I thought I would make this video just to explain a little bit about Shetland. And in fact, I'm going to grab the nests. This is said ringshaw, so it, I know it doesn't look like a lot. But to be honest, you aren't gonna, you know, it, it. This is how it. You're not gonna want. You're not expected to get a lot from a ring shawl. Now, as is combed Shetland top, <clears throat> you can see there is absolutely not a net or a noil in that. That is because I've combed it. Naturally, you won't get the short fibres in combing anyway, which contributes to the netting, but. But the rise has been completely removed, so no short fibres, only the long fibres, which is what you really want for spinning um, your, your sort of smooth, fine worsted yarns. So just to think, do not be alarmed when you get a lot of waste from this. Uh, it's quite natural for this fleece especially. And the other thing is, don't sell yourself short. If you've got a substandard Shetland fleece, don't bother. You know, you've not this rise off, but don't feel you have to use it. You know. At the end of the day, wool is a not a finite resource. Sheep are constantly growing more. And as far as I'm aware, the numbers of Shetland sheep especially are not declining. So do not worry about this wastage. It's probably going to be better for you in the long run in terms of your spinning. Um, so it's not a difficult, it's not at all a difficult fleece to spin, I would not say. I think it's quite a lovely fleece actually. Um, it's pretty soft. It has a really nice handle. It can be quite silky and have a fairly decent, you know, decent luster actually if you spin it properly. Well, in the right way. It depends how you can, what you want actually. But yeah, I just thought I would hopefully help anyone to and just sort of clear this up. I mean, as I say, you can sneak. I want to add actually thinking on it. You can these staples here. You can pretty much. How are you going to prepare this? Well. Providing you can just snap off the rise if you really want. I mean, I would flick card it then um, on either side of the staple. But if you want, you can just comb the staples on your, on a pair of hand combs uh, with Valkyries, whatever. I'd suggest probably Valkyrie fines, you know, extra fines for a Shetland maybe. Um, there, and you could also card it. You could stick it through a drum carder, or you can hand card it from these. Uh, it's not going to matter, but it's the rise that will give you, as I say, the, the nepping and the noiling. So that's <clears throat> pretty much the best way, I think, to get rid of it. So anyway, I hope you find this useful. Do let me know um, if there's anything you want me to clarify or add on, and I will try and do that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye.